this video is is a is a, 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 a very short warning to those people who actually believe the lies of cults such as Jehovah's Witness. Now, the obviously cults has many different definitions. Um, the one that I am personally talking about is a theological cult, which um, per, which pretends to be something of the original in this case Christianity, but contradicts it on major scales. Jehovah's Witness, for instance, denies every biblical doctrine there is to deny. Um, and they claim to have all this special knowledge, and yet they don't have any basis for, for, for making these wild claims. So let's look at one of their biggest claims, that Jesus is not, is not God. Now, obviously we're not saying anything about him being a created God. We're not saying about him being anything lower. I mean, he is God. He and the Father are equal. They are both fully God. Um, obviously, the Jehovah's Witness organization will tell you how to lie and how to reword things. And oh, no, we believe that Jesus is God. No, you don't. Um, and I do want to go on record saying that if something is created, it is not a God. At best, it is a maybe a powerful being, but it is not God. And also, if something is created, it is not worthy of praise or honor or, or anything like that. Um, and yet Jesus, we find, is worthy of that. So let's look at some, look at some of their claims. Um, firstborn, um, from Colossians 1.15. Now, in, in Colossians 1.15 it says this, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Now, if we leave it right there, it makes it sound like maybe there's a possibility that Jesus was the first created. Except that the rest of the passage clarifies what he's saying. Firstborn in this context is very obviously meaning he's um, preeminent in rank. He's he's I was talking more about his rank, not so much firstborn, but first in um, in rank. And it, let's look what it, what it goes on to say. For by him all things were created. Now logically, if he was created, all things could not be created through him. It would be all other things. And that's exactly what the Jehovah's Witness Bible adds. It adds the word other. When there's no reason in Greek to add that word other, they lie to you and tell you, oh, this better translates it, just to better substantiate their lies. Okay, How it should read, and you can look it up in the Greek yourself, is, for by him all things were created. In heaven and on earth, invisible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. If that's not God, I don't know what is. And he is, and he is before all things. Once again, he was not created. And in him all things hold together. Once again, he is not created. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. And in him... And in, <laughs> that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell. He says that again in chapter 2, verse, I believe it's 8. No, verse 9. Chapter 2, verse 9. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. So he says it twice. Um, and through him... Uh, to, to reconcile of himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. Um, obviously, this brings up serious doubts about about the um, the reality. Of, I mean, ser um, um, not serious doubts, but serious proof for the reality of hell and eternal punishment. Um, obviously, if there is no reason for eternal punishment, it would be hard to save us from something. But that's beside the point. We're just talking about Jesus being God. Um, so we see here, firstborn here just cannot possibly mean first created. And if you do a background check of the word, I think you'll kind of start to see things a little bit differently, maybe. John 1, 1 through 3, this is another one that they, that they just love. They just absolutely love to lie to you about. Oh no, Jehovah's Witness, we, we, don't, we don't lie. No, no, they do. John 1, 1 through 3, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now, in their great desire to completely misrepresent the Bible, to reaffirm themselves as the sole authority, they have taken this verse and completely manipulated it. Okay, completely manipulated it. Let's look at this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. 
pretty clear there. But see what the Jehovah's Witness claim, and they'll tell you this when you're going out to witness. They'll they'll make sure you're all in in you're you're aware of their of their little uh, biases of their little um, brainwashing that this is how we translate. No, they're lying to you again. They'll say it should be translated as a god. Now originally they said this was because there was there was no definite article in the Greek before God. Um, and the word was God at that time on God there's no um, there's no definite article so they say oh a god which is disproven by the rest of scripture but let's let's avoid the rest of scripture for this argument let's say let's say let's look at that to see if there's actual actual basis for that you see in greek there's this rule called Caldwell's rule and basically what it says is if something is the predicate and not the subject it doesn't need the definite article it, it doesn't need it so then the jehovah's witness later um, I want to say this was in the 90s, said, you know, okay, yes, Caldwell's rule, that, that, that's something that does apply, that, that's true. However, the context shows us that it still should be translated as a god. Well, let's see, does the context show us that? He was in the beginning with God, so there's a big no. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. If you look in another one of their, the ones that they love to take out of context is Jesus is the only begotten of God. Oh, this means this means only created, right? No. Hebrews uh, chapter 11 uses the exact same term to uh, refer to Abraham's second born son. It says that Isaac is Abraham's monogenes, his only begotten. Okay? But we know that Abraham had one child before, Ishmael, and many children after the fact. So after Isaac. Ishmael, Isaac, then he, he had more, which created the Arab nations. Now we know, we know that he has multiple, multiple children. And yet Hebrews 11 uses that same word, which John uses to describe of Jesus, monogenes. So how do we how do we know who who's right? It's very simple. Monogenes does not mean only begotten. It means a special, or unique. Isaac is Abraham's unique. Jesus is God's unique. Why why is it mentioned that? Because Jesus came into the world as a human. Okay, God became flesh in Jesus Christ. Therefore, he was born of God. He was the son of God. Because he took on a, a human a human body, it was God who caused uh, the ba the child in Mary. It was not a man; it was God. So therefore, it was the Son of God. This really isn't that difficult. But yet the Jehovah's Witness will twist it and twist it and twist it to get you all confused, and then tell you that you have to believe it. So let's look at some more Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. Don't let a cult lie to you. Don't let them lie to you. Double check for yourself. Isaiah 9, 6. Oh, and they just love to get you in their little lies. They'll, they'll, they'll hit you real fast with a bunch of different things and make you think that they're right. And so then they'll ease you into their corrupt doctrine until finally you're so mixed around you can't even see which way is, which way is up. And the thing is, is you'll actually believe that you're content until one day you wake up and you just, you just feel wrong. In, in our community, there's this church that doesn't do a single thing for the community. It's called the Jehovah's Witness Kingdom Hall. And then there's a church that does do stuff for, for the community. It's called the Assemblies of God Church. It's right here on the corner. But the Jehovah's Witness teach that organized religions, you know, they hate everyone and they don't want to do anything. And the only reason why they would ever do, do charity is to... Uh, is some way to lie to the people. Meanwhile, the Jehovah's Witnesses aren't doing anything for the community and claiming that they love the community. James said that faith without works is dead, and I think it's this exact same way with love. If you say you love someone, but there's nothing in your action that shows it, that's not really love. Isaiah 9, 6. For as a child is born, to as a son is given, obviously talking about Jesus, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Very clear. 
from the context. And see, what the Jehovah's Witness will tell you is they'll tell you to just completely ignore the context around. You have to have their understanding of the scriptures. You have to see things from their point of view. And they'll just tell it, point out these little verses and they'll completely ignore everything around it. They'll ignore the Greek. They'll ignore uh, historical Christianity. They'll ignore everything. And they'll tell you that their way is the complete right way and not to ask any questions. That's a cult. And as much as they deny it, they're following their corrupt leader, Charles Russell. If you compare his writings with, with previous writings, I mean, with current writings, the doctrine is the exact same. It's changed. It's changed the way it's worded, but the doctrine is the same, just reworded. Chapter 43, verse 10. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me no God was formed, nor shall there be any after me. So that would make some say, oh, that just means that he was the only created God, maybe. Well, let's see if there's any basis to that. 45, 5-7. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me there is no God. I equip you, though you do not know me. Okay, there is no other besides... Okay, all right. Now, what they'll say is, oh, there's no other God Almighty. But that's not what he said. That's not what he said at all. He said there is no other God. Okay? And also, going back to the John 1, 1 through 3 thing, how, how it doesn't have the definite article, the word was a God. Later on, it says that John was sent from God, and that God doesn't have a definite article either. So are you saying it should be John the Baptist was sent by a God? Who is this a God? Is there another God besides Jesus that is mentioning? Just some random God out there? That's polytheism. That means there, there's more than one God and you worship at least one of those gods. That's polytheism, okay? Multiple gods. That people may know me from the rising of the sun and from the west, that there is none besides me. I am the Lord and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does all these things. How many times did he say, I am the Lord and there is no other? See, but the Jehovah's Witness, they'll tell you, oh no, 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 this, it means this, it means this. You have to hop through all of our loopholes to find the true hidden meaning. They are lying to you. I appeal to you under the authority of Jesus Christ and under the authority of his word. They are lying to you. Seek help. Research it for yourself. Don't go to them. Find out for yourself. Find out for yourself. Because they are lying to you. Okay, this is what they'll tell you. Don't ask any questions. If you ask any questions when you're a member, you can be, even be kicked out. You can be ostracized. You can be blackballed. If there's a if there's a family member that comes to visit you that isn't a believer, you're supposed to try and try and witness them to them, and then when they don't accept, you're supposed to tell them we can't have these visits anymore. Your own family, your own flesh and blood. You're supposed to you're supposed to dogmatically believe things that they tell you with no basis whatsoever. Then they tell you that you have to earn your salvation. If you don't go to the kingdom hall, you are not saved. If you don't believe in Jesus, you are not saved. Okay? If you don't go door-to-door -door witnessing, you are not saved. So you have to earn your salvation through works. And that makes you ask, how much works do I have to do? Always one more. Always one more. If you say, oh no, I've gone and I've witnessed yesterday door-to-door, -door, then they'll tell you, well, yeah, but you have to do it again. And then you have to do it again. Then you have to do it again. And then maybe, just maybe, through the course of your life, there's a small all hope that maybe you have aren't, you have done enough to gone to be with the to go to be with the Father. But I'm sorry, but not in heaven though on the new earth. Um, even though that Paul said that the earth around us is wasting away, it makes it a thing about all about about earning your way to salvation. But Paul said in Ephesians that we are saved by grace through faith, and that not even of ourselves, but not through works, so that no one could brag. See, the amount of hypocrisy in the Jehovah's Witness, don't let them lie to you. Don't let them lie to you. Then they say, oh, give us your dues. You have to, you have to, you have to do all this special stuff, and you're strongly encouraged to, to pay a certain amount. And, oh, no, we don't believe in this wicked, wicked this, wicked that. And then the leaders of the Jehovah's Witness are doing the exact same things that they tell you not to do. They're hypocrites, they're liars, they're thieves, and they'll do anything to get their own way. They are either completely ignorant of Greek and the scriptures, or they are lying to you. There is no other solution because they have, it, it, any serious scholar will tell you there is no basis for their for their translation. But if you go and try to try to question it, try to ask any questions, oh no, you'll be ostracized. You'll be kicked out. And they tell you, oh no, you you can you can do that. No, you can only you can only ask questions before 
you become a member. After you become a member, it's their way or the highway. You have to agree with them on everything. Even though they're, they've gotten prophecies wrong throughout history, everything they've changed their, their stance on multiple things throughout history, Consider the way that uh, Jesus was supposed to come and, and at a certain time, then, oh no, it's, it's a later time, and now it's sometime in the future, regardless of its connection with 1914. They're lying to you, and they're covering up their lies. Um, then they ask you to sacrifice your life and your money. You have to give up your time, you have to give up your family, you have to give up your money. You have to go, you have to, go, to, their, go to their kingdom hall five times a week. You have to do all these little things and off through all these little, little loopholes. You have to be brainwashed. You have to do everything just like they say, and if you don't, you're not saved. So I think through all these things we see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of proof for second guessing, and that's all I'm asking you to do. You don't have to take my word for it. Research it for yourself. Go find the answers. And don't just go to the Jehovah's Witness for answers. Go to others, too. Go to the Catholics. Go to Pentecostals. Go to the Jehovah's Witness, too. But go to everyone. Go to the Internet. Learn the languages yourself. Do whatever it takes to find out and be sure of your salvation, of whether or not you are being lied to by a cult. Okay? Consider the fact that the Holy Spirit is talked about as an actual person in the book of Acts. That the Holy Spirit sent them. That the Holy Spirit said. That Peter said, you have not lied to man, but to God. And then he, and then he says that, that, that who they've lied to is the Holy Spirit. Consider these things. Jesus says that after me, I will send the Comforter. How could the Comforter be, a, be just a, a, a presence when he talks about him as an actual personality? Okay, they are lying to you. Um, also, they have no qualifications for making these claims. They deny every historical basis, and they say they have the special knowledge, and yet they have no, no way of proving that. They have no qualifications. They're not skilled in Greek. The little bit of Greek they do know is so skewed by their own, by their own writers that it's just not even realistic. And then it's all anonymous. Oh, we've translated this Bible, but it's completely anonymous, and you have no way of knowing our qualifications. Get real. They are lying to you. Now that, but they're not even a, a you know, I'm, I'm getting a little bit off topic with that, but do some background about the Jehovah's Witness. They are liars, they are thieves, and they are a cult who lie to you about salvation and in so doing lead you away from the truth. They lead you away from the truth. So in closing, the last thing that I'm going to say here is Jesus is God. He's the only way of salvation. He's not a God. He's not a lesser God. He is fully God. Okay? He is fully God. Um, I hope that, that, that something I've said here has gotten through, at least in part. Do not believe the lies of the Jehovah's Witness. I could make, and I probably will in the future, entire videos, 40 minutes long, of, of, of the truth behind Jehovah's Witness. For the sake of this video, just give it second thought. Give your belief some pause. Just consider it. Don't let them lie to you and make you believe dogmatic bullcrap. Okay? I implore you. I beg you. Give it second thought. Give it second thought. Colossians itself is enough to give you second thought. Colossians was written um, in part to people who said that Jesus was not fully God. So therefore you had to do works to add to it. Isn't that exactly what the Jehovah's Witnesses are saying? Arius in the 300s AD claimed the exact same thing, that Jesus was not fully God. He was condemned as a heretic. Historically, we can prove that the church has always held to the fact that Jesus was fully God. Not only that, but if he's not God, why is he always receiving praise? In the New Testament, why does he receive praise? Why is he hinted towards being sent, being worshipped in the Old Testament? Think of Daniel, when he says that the Son of Man was next to the Ancient of Days. And all the things that the Ancient of Days says to the Son of Man. And then Jesus says, I am the Son of Man. And John says, Behold the Lamb of God. Think about this. Just think about it. <laughs> 